This is the H&M Walkabout controller, Some, a controller that dates back to the 1980s, as you can tell by its um, special looking design, and I think it's the coolest model railway controller ever made. Now, a few weeks ago I showed this on the blog, and it was broken, but thanks to Dave at Boat Club, who's an electronics engineer, it's now fully working, so I'm going to be able to give you a little tour and show you how the thing works, and show you what real 80s control actually looked like. As you can see, we have a uh, sliding p potentiometer here, which is uh, nice and easy to use, and look, I'm holding this one-handed, even my left hand, which isn't my best controlling hand. Um, we have a forward and reverse switch at the bottom, a massive chunky thing, and then there is a momentum control at the top with three different levels of momentum. And if you short anything out, you've got a light here to, to uh, tell you that uh, something bad has happened. All this lot's attached to a nice coily cable um, so that you can walk around your layout, hence the name H&M Walkabout. The loco I'm using for my test is a Backman Billy, which is their version of the uh, Thomas the Tank engine, but sold here as an industrial loco because they had at Hornby have the uh, license for Thomas in the UK. Now, Backman actually have stopped selling Billy because uh, there were some issues with it looking still a lot too much like Thomas for the uh, license holders' considerations. Anyway, Billy here is sat on top of a uh, Bacchus rolling road. It's a rather neat device here with three different three cradles, all of which sitting on top of a nice piece of Pico track. The great thing about the Bacchus is it's completely adjustable both for the wheelbase and actually for the gauge, which is very handy if, like me, you work in several different gauges. OK, in standard mode, what we get is we just push the knob up and the loco goes up to speed. And can be slowed down again. And of course we have a nice great big chunky button for reverse. So we, uh, look at that, wind that up, that's lovely. At the top we have a momentum button. At the moment it's set to one dot, which is direct control. So exactly the same as you'd have with a normal controller. If I move it up to a second dot, you can see when I push the um, push the slider up, nothing happens. But the loco gradually builds up speed. And is soon thrashing away at the uh, speed I've set it at. If I push the knob down now, push the, you can see that nothing happens very much. but gradually the loco should start to slow down. Now this is representing a uh, modest train behind the loco, so uh, it's going to take a long while to uh, slow down. However, if I want to speed things up, I've got a brake button here. Press the brake, and you can see it takes some of the inertia out of the system. Press the brake a bit more, and we're back down to nothing. And if I've got a really heavy train, I can switch it up to three um, dots on the controller, shove the controller all the way up and you can watch it gradually crawling away there. Now you can see I'm not actually having to do anything, the controller is handling all the inertia itself. This is uh, something that used to be really popular on DC controllers many years ago. We've kind of lost it nowadays um, because DCC has taken over but you can see it's quite effective really. Um, loco speeding up gradually there. And If I press the brake you can see it slows down again and then picks up speed all over again. Now the only trouble with this setting is it takes forever to slow the loco down, so even if I move the slider all the way down to the bottom, you can see hardly any change in the, um, in the speed of the loco unless I put the brake on. And there we are, stopped. So there you have it, the H&M Walkabout, all the way from the 1980s. It's a lot cooler than all you kids using your smart pods to uh, work your DCC stuff. Pure DC control, that's what it's all about. And uh, certainly I'm looking forward to using this on a layout properly in the future.